Hi guys, everybody else did this tag last month because it is the mid-year check-in tag technically created by Dane Reads and Harriet Rosie last year, I think. So I'll link to both their channels below. But the, I block out specific times to film and the last time I blocked out it was over 100, 100 degrees in this room. We don't have any fans or air conditioning and we're at the top of a fifth floor walk up. So it, it was just too hot to film. Happy to be here today though to talk about these general questions because as I haven't been filming as much this year, you guys don't know a lot of these very basic things about my reading life so far. Question one is how many books have you read so far this year? Goodreads says 43. I think the actual number is closer to 70 and I'm not thrilled with that number, but I'm not disappointed either. I think, you know, I'm, I'm still generally stressed about how much I'm reading, but it's more because of these big long-term goals that I'm steadily working toward and not so much on a on a year by year basis anymore, which is great because I've I felt more freedom this year than ever before to pick up you know big or otherwise time consuming books. Question two is what's your favorite book you've read so far this year? A few stand out to me, but one that I haven't mentioned at all yet on this channel is Old Baggage by Alyssa Evans, which came out in April of this year. And a big thanks to Steve for sending me this uh, early copy of it. Ignored the jaundiced cover. I don't know what's going on there. Um, so I I knew the, the premise of this and it sounded like a very me book. It takes place in 1928 in London with two spinster suffragettes who are reckoning with the fact that now that women have the right to vote in Britain, people are acting like, well, what are you still fighting for? Why do we still have to listen to you? Why are you here? What do you want? Um, and one of them in particular lives by what she considers her moral code. And she's put into a situation where gradually she betrays her own morals. So I, I thought that I would enjoy this and I'd heard other people say they liked it, but found some flaws in it, that kind of thing. I didn't expect it to be so good. It is almost the perfect combination of charming and substantive, tight writing, beautiful character portraits. I so enjoyed spending time with these characters. Interesting plot decisions too. It's, it's not plot driven, but she does cool things with that. I, I just resented the time that I had to leave the house while I was reading this. Number three is what's the most disappointing book you've read so far this year? And I'm self-conscious about this choice, um, partly because it's, it's a far cry from being the worst book I've read. In fact, I wouldn't even feel confident evaluating it at all, but it's Where Reasons End by Yu Yun Lee. I rarely buy hardbacks. I just don't have the money or the space for them. So that gives you a good indication of how much I expected to love this. I've always been intrigued by Yu Yun Lee's short stories. The reviews of this were fantastic. And just the, the basic description. So Lee's teenage son committed suicide several years ago. And this is a fictionalized version of a mother talking to her teenage son who has committed suicide or the idea that remains of her teenage son. So to call it it fraught is an understatement. The strange thing was I felt no emotional or intellectual connection to this whatsoever. And it, it, it can often happen that a book isn't completely resonating with me, but it still makes me ask questions. I have that urge to analyze while I'm experiencing it. And, and this one, I wasn't even curious about it. It felt like these were private thoughts in, in their own sort of walled off garden and that were meant to be walled off from outside understanding. And I experienced it at such a remove that I, I had this almost uncharitable thought. I'm sure that you needed to write this in some respects, but did I need to read it? You know, does every private diary benefit from other people experiencing it. Question four is what genre have you read most of this year? Literary fiction, mostly novels. I read plenty of other stuff, but that's still my, my bread and butter. Does that even count as a genre though? I don't know. Let's hurry on to a question that makes me seem less boring. Okay, this should be much better. Question five is name a new favorite author you've discovered this year. And for me, without a doubt, it's Peter Orner. Maggie Brown and Others is his short story collection that came out at the beginning of July. And it's a number of shorter than short stories with a, a novella at the end. Two reviews of this in the New York Times give you a, a good idea of what the reading experience is like. 
um, it, he has that sort of classic American Carver Bellow-esque feel to him. But something I appreciated was that I, I couldn't tell the genders of the narrators when the stories started. I, I usually had to wait for an indicator, which isn't something I necessarily expected. And reading Orner just makes me, it makes me notice what it is about short stories, you know, what they can achieve that isn't replicated in any other form. These aren't the kind of stories where each one is going to be, you know, distinct in your memory, I don't think, unless you read the collection several times. There are just too many stories, and a lot of them are about everyday life, but they're these tender, moving flashes of experience, and I'm in awe of his craft, and I want to read so many more of his books. Number six is what's the most surprisingly good book you've read this year? And this is me outing myself as a milkman lover. <laughs> you guys, I loved this book in a way that felt out of the blue. It probably shouldn't have, but that's the way it did feel because opinion has been so divided on it. And when there are two camps and one is saying, this is gorgeous, it's a masterpiece, the odd language makes it all the more profound. And there's another camp saying, this is overwritten, it's cluttered, and it makes you put in more work than it's worth. Historically, I've often been in that second camp. And it, it wasn't just casual reviewers saying those things. Professional reviewers, too, were kind of puzzled by it to a certain degree. But I I was spellbound. For those of you who aren't familiar, this came to prominence because it, it surprisingly won the Booker last year. And it's set in the 1970s in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. For the first 30 to 40 pages, I was interested in what it was doing, but I kept thinking, what is going to compel me to pick this back up again and again? It does feel like work at this point, but gradually I, I surrendered to it. And I, I keep coming back to words like primal and, and mythic for, for what it does with lots of funny passages and just everyday observations as well. The Booker is on it, you guys. Lincoln and the Bardo and then this. Like, I don't want to get too carried away because it did shortlist Exit West all too recently, but like, get it, judges. Question seven is what are your favorite and most anticipated 2019 releases? So other than a few that I've already mentioned, I loved Inland by Taya Obrett. This is the, the galley cover and this is what the actual finished covers is going to look like. I didn't love the Tiger's Wife. I was impressed by elements of it, but but never became invested. And so I went into this fairly cynical and didn't love the first section. And then something happened where it just got its hooks in me. And it does feel like a, a real progression for this author. So I'm going to be doing a written review of this soon. Actually, I have a deadline for it, so I can't put it off and I'll link you guys to that when it's up. And then for anticipated releases, I'm gonna quickly mention three fiction and three nonfiction that either have come out already or are going to come out later this year. So for fiction, there's Lost and Found by Nell Freudenberger. She's a writer I, I'm always keeping my eye on. Sing to It by Amy Hempel, another collection of short stories from a, a, just a duchess of short stories. And The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. I've never read any Ann Patchett and that is going to change people, okay? And then for 2019 nonfiction, I wanna sink my teeth into, we have Mama's Last Hug by Franz de Waal about animal emotions. Midnight in Chernobyl by Adam Higginbotham. I did just watch the HBO series. And the um, Benjamin Moser biography of Susan Sontag that's scheduled to come out in September of this year. Number eight is what's your next big priority for your reading? And for me, it's continuing to focus on what I call time-consuming nonfiction. So that could be, you know, a thousand-page biography, or it could be a 350-page book that's still denser and requires a little more effort than your average novel. So I have a list of essentials, books that I am going to read, and I'm crossing one off every month. So it's not, you know, an intensive project. But my goal is after I read three of them to have mini reviews of them for this channel. 
We'll see if I follow through, you guys, but I'm excited about the, the idea of it. And I have two answers for the last question. What's your bookish highlight of the year so far? One is classic and contemporary pairings. My previous video, as some of you will have seen, was talking about Aeschylus in conversation with a recent novel by Colin Tobin, and I have several other pairs planned throughout the year. Stay tuned for those videos. And then the second highlight, surprising no one who has watched the handful of videos I've put out this year, is reading Antony Trollope's The Chronicles of Barsetshire. So the first one, which I actually read last year, is The Warden. And this will drag you in because you think it's not going to be a huge commitment, and then you get these beasts. So there's Barchester Towers, my favorite so far, Dr. Thorne, and Family Personage, which I'm hoping to read in August. There are two more in this series as well, and when I finish all six, I'll make you know, a general video with my thoughts, but oh, he's delightful. He, I am so glad that his books are in my life. And for question 10, who do you tag? I would have to start naming people for the 2020 edition of this, so I won't, but I want to thank Harriet and Dane for coming up with these really helpful questions, especially in my situation this year, as I mentioned, where I haven't been checking in very often, and I will see you guys soon, hopefully, for another video.